He's from um, Alpha Colors Church and he has been around here numerous times. So without further ado, I'd like to just invite Pastor Justin to come and share the word. Wow, for that picture you put up there, you're going to get an extra blessing because it comes with the Manchester United um, thing, you know. So if you are a Manchester United fan, you shall be blessed. <laughs> Just everyone will be blessed this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for having me um, uh, to the leaders of the church, uh, elders and leaders, and all of you, uh, members of New Life. Thank you for having me. Uh, this time I've come with my wife, uh, Pastor Lai King. Yeah, maybe she can come and say something. Uh, Every time I come alone, many people ask, so I better bring my wife this time, <laughs> all right. Good morning. Good morning, church. Good morning. We are so glad to be here. So good to see smiling faces. Thank you for your hospitality. Make us so warm and so at home. And indeed, this is the house of God. Amen. amen. Are you glad to be here? Yes, amen. I was just um, uh, asking God in the morning, you know, God... Um, you know, do you have a word that uh, for me to encourage? Because from me means nothing. If it is word from me, uh, it's, it's nothing. It's just all, you know. You know, if it is my words, if it is not God's words, I mean, it is, it is nothing good comes out from our mouth, you know. But we want God to speak to the church. Amen. Because you are so precious to him. You are so wonderful. You are so beautiful. And God considers you so special. You know that he created you uh, for a purpose. For his kingdom purpose. Amen? Amen? Yeah? None of us who are seated here by accident. Even if you bump into the church by accident. Oh, oh I'm supposed to go there but I'm here. Even if it's by accident, God has a purpose for you. Amen? Right where you are sitting. Okay? So... You know, I, actually I wanted to read uh, Proverbs 3, okay, because um, today is 3rd October, somebody said that day, every day you read one Proverbs, okay, so we have done it many times, and every time we read the Proverbs, because Proverbs have 31 chapters, every day you read one from, you know, from God's Word, and you get some nuggets of wisdom from there, yeah, so today I read uh, Proverbs chapter 3, and this part, it just in the beginning, you know, when I read the whole scripture, it's like, God, there's so much of, of, of wisdom, of words of encouragement here. But what is it that you want, you know, for the church to hear? Okay, so I'm just going to read verse 1 to 4. It says, my child, he said, my child, that means all, each one of us individually, he's speaking to us. My child, never forget the things I have taught you. Store my commands in your heart. What is the command? I'm sure you know. The command is the commandment of the Bible. In the Bible. Yeah? That is the command. Say, if you do this, you will live many years. Amen. And as I walk into the church, I say, wow. Okay? Okay? For me, uh, age is just a number. Right? Age is just a number. Yeah? You will live many years. You want to have long life. Keep the commands in you. Your life will be satisfying. Amen. Satisfied. You'll be contented. Yeah? Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Okay? Amen? Be loyal. Be kind. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your hearts. Write what? The loyalty. You know? Loyalty towards God. Towards the church. Towards the leaders. Kindness to one another. To the poor. You are praying for the group of Rao's. I've not even heard of it. I've only know of a Rao family, an Indian family, and the surname is Rao. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I know. Yeah. And today I, I see the, the whole village. Yeah, un, unreached. Yeah. Then you will find favor. You want to find favor with God and with His people. Yeah, when you find favor with God, 
you will find favour with his people. Don't find favour among people. You will never find one. Yeah? But find favour with God and you will earn good reputation. We don't have to build our own reputation. On our own, we got nothing. Nothing to show off. But all the more, we have God to show off. Amen? Amen. I just want to leave this word into our hearts today. Thank you very much for having us. It's a privilege and an honour. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that was a, a good word. Yeah. Every time there's a word uh, to be released. Yeah. Uh, we believe in the word. We are a people of the word. You know, as Christians, we are known as the people of the book. Yeah. And and, and the word is alive. Yeah. So this morning, as uh, Pastor Lai King have just released that word. Yeah. Uh, we pray that it will prosper in your heart. Yeah, it will prosper in your heart. And I tell you, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the mission and the, this mission season uh, that we are in. And uh, God has called us to preach the gospel. And uh, there are many unreached people uh, group. And I think uh, your church, the church is in the right track. Yeah, in the right track. Uh, because you choose to, to have a heart for the unreached and you will be blessed. Yeah, I think there are many rich groups, right? And it's, it's wonderful that the mission is so looking forward uh, in a wider spectrum for the unrich because Jesus said that everybody shall hear the gospel, then the end shall come. But that end is actually our beginning. Hallelujah. Uh, the return of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So, yeah, uh, God is good. And this morning, I just want to talk to you. Uh, oh, I, got, I, I think I got the clicker, right? Yeah. I forgot what the clicker. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. Talking about staying sharp. Yeah, staying sharp. And uh, how God wants us all to stay sharp. Like uh, Pastor Lai King just said just now, um, it doesn't matter how old we are. Age is not the matter. Whether we are mature, we are young, we are a student, you are a housemaker, you are a housewife, you are a businessman, you are a, uh, studying in school, yeah, or you are working for someone, you are a, a grandfather, you are a grandmother staying at home taking care of uh, grandchildren, uh, you are helping them to school, whatever, wherever you are at right now in your life, we are meant to stay sharp. Can I hear a big loud amen? You are meant to stay sharp by the grace of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit. We are meant to stay sharp in whatever we do. Yeah? If you are driving, you are, uh, if you are driving, you are doing some transport uh, work, yeah? we stay sharp. Yeah? If you are cooking, also stay sharp. <laughs> All right, then only uh, we, we are safe, right? Don't, don't put extra chili because that day you didn't feel so good, <laughs> right? Ah, eat this, uh, all the children, uh, eat hot, hot, uh, right? But in everything, we stay sharp, yeah? Staying sharp and not getting dull. So what does the Bible say in Ecclesiastes 10.10? 10? If the iron is blunt and one does not sharpen the edge, he must use more strength. But wisdom helps one to succeed. Isn't this so true? When, when your knife is sharp, right? You cut or slice effortlessly, right? If your knife is sharp, you're cutting meat or cutting a fruit, whatever that you're doing. If your knife is so sharp, you almost use very less self-energy. It will just like slice, right? But if the knife gets blunt, you will actually require more strength to press, right? To cut. We are actually requiring more strength. Then that, this is simple matter in the kitchen, right? Where we, we are actually requiring more strength, but we don't realize it so much. But sometimes uh, when it's really blunt, you got to really cut that. For example, you are cutting a fruit and with a blunt knife, sometimes it's like, hey, how come it's not going through? What about in the outdoors? Working in the outdoors as a carpenter, if you are a carpenter here or you do work on the outside, if you are using a blunt tool, it will require a lot more strength. Even those cutters, the fence cutters, right? If you, you know what I'm talking about, the pliers. If it's sharp, it will just go like tuck, 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 tuck. If it's blunt, it will go like... Mm. <laughs> then you've got to use two hands to open up. Because it's been rusty. How many of you been there? 
I'm talking from my experience. It's so rusty, you press, it won't open up. Then you got to use two hands to open up again and then cut again. <laughs> it's, it's just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm quite a handyman and I've learned, I've learned this. If your tools are not in place, you do a simple thing for a long time. If you can drill something on the wall in like maybe 15 minutes, if your tool is blunt, it will take you sometimes two to three hours because you just mess up the whole thing. <laughs> the wall plugs, the hole, the everything. Now, it takes longer time and it takes more energy. What am I trying to say? When our tools are not sharp, and our tools are not in place, it's going to require more energy, self-energy, very self-reliant, and we're going to get tired and exhausted. So it is in our spiritual life. When we are sharp, it's less of you, more of God. Hallelujah. You be efficient. You are sharp. God is speaking. Sometimes, oh God, I don't know what to do. I don't know, should I do this? Should I do that? I'm not sure. Seek the Lord. If the iron is sharp, wisdom helps one to succeed. That's what the word says. So don't on our own trying to figure things out when actually we are not sharp, we are blunt. So we are, we are, we are going to use a lot of self-energy. But when we trust in Him, and we stay sharp in Him. Wisdom helps one to succeed. And I didn't know that this morning we're going to read uh, Proverbs in the beginning. And Proverbs is the book of wisdom, right? Abraham Lincoln, they say, spent most of his time actually sharpening his axe. Yeah? Abraham Lincoln, the, first, uh, the president, right? Of uh, the United States. He spent a lot of time sharpening himself. He was a man of God and, and even in studies, even in everything, they, they say that he used to study even under the lamp, lamp post light, the street lights. Because they didn't have light, they have to go out to the streets and be out there. Most of the time, sharpening himself. Amen. Now, let's look at Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 21. For the shepherds are stupid. And do not inquire of the Lord. Therefore, they have not prospered and all their flock is scattered. Alright? Not I say anyone stupid. Huh? It's in the Bible. Huh? <laughs> Why is pastor say stupid one? Okay, I'm just reading the Bible. It says that we are not wise or we are foolish as shepherds of the Lord if we do not inquire of the Lord. And I don't want to be in that place. Neither do you and I. All of us want to be in that place. We want to be in the place where we want to inquire of the Lord. Hallelujah. And when we inquire of the Lord, we shall prosper. And our people shall be together. As a church, as a family, for your own household, you, your children shall be together together. If you have a children who are just graduating and finding jobs right now, they shall prosper. They shall find the right job. God will open the right door for your, for your children. And if you are a young adult, you know, you are thinking about career and everything, you shall inquire of the Lord. And the Lord shall open the right doors and you shall prosper. And in this as a family, as a unit, as a church, as a community, we shall not live scattered and aimless. Amen. First Samuel chapter 13 verse 20. So all Israel went to the Philistines to have their blow points, the mattocks, axes, and sickles sharpened. The people went and got their tools sharp. Today, this morning, I pray that God make us sharp. If there's any area in our life is getting a bit blunt, we pray that, oh Holy Spirit, you sharpen us. 
Amen. If our mind is begin to wander and got a bit distracted because of some family problems, oh God, you 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 help me and make me sharp so that I do not simply speak foolishly and make the problem worse. Yeah. See, all these things are very practical things, one. Because when we are blunt, we 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 want to justify, we want to do something on our own. But let us pray. Right? The people of God went. They're going to go for a challenge. They're going to go for a mission. They're going to go for something that is ahead of them. What did they do? They sharpened their tools first. The mattox, the axe, and the sickle. Let's look at the mattox. Right? Sometimes we read the Bible, mattox. Now what is that? How does it look like? Okay. This is a mattox. And what does it do? The mattox breaks the hard ground. How many of you here are like good with gardening and all those green fingers they say? Anyone? You are, you are pretty good. Yeah? How many of you think that you are good but no one told you that? <laughs> Some of us are, I, I think I'm pretty good. But no, one, no one actually said that. You know, when we visit people's house sometimes, we say, oh, nice garden you have and everything. But your house, people come, no one said anything. Then you know, like, okay, we got, we got no great garden. But we got something else. <laughs> the method is used to break ground. Harden ground, you use the method to soften it. Right? Because hard ground cannot grow things. Hard ground, whatever you try to invest and you try to do, you try to do counseling, you try to do speak, you take for a meal, you talk to them, and all, everything, you share the Bible, you, you, you preach your heart out to people, you spend a lot of time with people, but their heart is hard and cannot receive. I, we have experienced that, you know, we, we, in, in, uh, we, when we do uh, some ministry to the young people and all, some people, um, we, we spend a lot of time and then we see they don't change. They don't change. Same, same thing and everything. Then I realized that their heart is hard, hardened. So how much you want to do also, you throw, nothing will grow there. It needs a mattock where it needs to be broken. You break it. You break the ground of the heart. Right? It needs the softening. And then the water of the Holy Spirit. Life change, transformation happens. The use of the metoc is to break grounds. As a church, um, a new life, you, you have gone through uh, many challenges over the years and God has been good. But in that process, I think the leaders and the elders will testify that, oh, there was use of metox because some areas needed breakthrough. Sometimes the enemy put obstacles and everything that needs breakthrough, which the use of the metox. Yeah, the use of the metox. Uh, Isaiah chapter 41. Behold, I make of you a threshing sledge, new sharp and having teeth, you shall thresh the mountains and crush them, and you shall make the hills like chaff. Right? What, why, why, what is this all for? Why do we exist as a church? Why should we exist as a church? Why should we be here this morning? As a church, as the body of Christ, we've come to worship Him. We've come to adore Him. And then we are meant to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. This, uh, uh, don't, don't, uh, I know Christmas is coming and uh, there will be Easter, but don't wait just for big events to share the gospel, right? Because we are meant to be a sickle, harvest. Yeah? The sickle is for harvest. When the hard grounds are broken, soften, pray, fill with the Holy Spirit, yeah, then, you know, the word, the gospel, the truth and everything will prosper in the hearts of the people. Oh, 
uh, we, we can testify, and I'm sure you also can testify to this fact, that when God start to move and change lives, it is beyond our imagination. Families can be transformed. Families that have been many problems and always fighting, suddenly can be totally changed and saved. You know, when we were uh, growing up, uh, uh, we grew up in, I grew up in section uh, 16, uh, in, in flats, right? In the flats. So we live in flats on the, on the first floor. And our right-hand side neighbor uh, is, is a Chinese family. And we are very close, right? The mother, father, got about five siblings or uh, so they are, we are very close, but we are, we are believers, right? We go to church and everything, they are, they are not, but they always come to the house and we also go to their house and everything. Wonderful relationship, but when come to the gospel or we sharing the gospel, they are very resistant. Uh, but they, are, they make fun of us, they call us the hallelujah people. Ah, hallelujah people. Ah, pergi mana? Hallelujah. <laughs> ah, balik dari hallelujah. The, the word church and all that is, is not. Like they only know hallelujah. So they will sometimes joke and make fun of us about hallelujah people and everything. But we always love them. We pray for them for many years. Shared the gospel. Uh, one of the daughter at one time had a demon uh, 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 possession. Yeah, we went and prayed and, and she got delivered and everything. But yet, they did not want to believe uh, Christ and everything. We lived there for, I think, 20, 20 over years and everything, have good relationship, everything. We shared, we poured the seed and everything. But many years later, we found out, you know, my mom was telling me, we found out that the entire family has now accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Saviour and they are attending some Hokkien church in uh, Klang. We do not, not in our church, not in our this thing, you know, it doesn't matter. They are, the entire family has accepted the Lord attending a Hokkien church. Isn't it amazing? The harvest, the harvest, yeah? As, as a church, you know, as your neighbors, your community and everything, sometimes you share the gospel, never mind, share the gospel. Let them know that you're a Christian. Don't shock your neighbor by, by not telling that you are a Christian or rather showing that you are a Christian. Like, don't shock them, you know, like, ah, you Christian? <laughs> that is a tragedy. <laughs> that will be a tragedy if your neighbor one day found out that you are a Christian. Right? They should know you are a Christian. They should know you are a child of God. Not as a religion Christian, by our conduct, by our lifestyle, by our speech, by our generosity. Hallelujah. You know, when we do that, just doing that, sometimes they say, preach the gospel, if necessary, use words. Right? The kingdom of God, the use of the sickle. You be sharp. Yeah? Don't get into unnecessary arguments or wanting to be right. How many of you, you all got resident group WhatsApp in your neighborhood? Resident group WhatsApp is an interesting place, right? The two main common arguments, the cats, the dogs, <laughs> your cat, they are the pro-animal and the anti. Yeah, there's always these two groups, you know. Call the uh, local council. The others say, don't call local council. They will come and uh, this thing. You know, there's always this, this uh, uh, thing. I find it very interesting. But I think even in those uh, RA groups and everything, as a child of God, right, we must always show a good uh, conduct, yeah, a good conduct and get our opinions and thoughts in the right manner, yeah, in the right manner. And, and these are all testimonies because at the end of the day, we want to be sharp, for the harvest of souls. And we don't want to put anything that will dampen that process. Personally, as a child of God, and also at the body of Christ. Right? You know, sometimes, how many of you, sometimes we hear, you know, your church, as a church, you want to uh, minister to a community, and then the community say, are you Christians? I do like this, I do like that. Some is true, some is not true. By the end of the day, we cannot change everybody. We need to just stay sharp as a community. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's move on. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. 
In the shadow of his hand, he hit me. He made me a polished arrow in his quiver and he hit me away. Jesus was sharp, right? One of the best ways for us to learn uh, in, in uh, conversation and in relational was Jesus himself in, in, uh, in uh, uh, John chapter 4 with the Samaritan woman. I mean, that woman had, had like, she, she came to draw water, but when I read uh, John uh, chapter 4, it seems like she got her agenda uh, prepared. Like she's got a lot of things to say. Of course she did not. She came to draw water. But she had a lot of things to counter Jesus. But Jesus was so sharp, isn't it? The way he said, you know, about thirst, you shall, you shall drink this water, you shall never thirst. Then she talks about the husband. Then she talks about the worship. Uh, uh, our fathers say worship in this mountain or that mountain. From worship, from marriage, from, from community issues. Jesus was so sharp in his conversation. And, and when we can be like that in daily conversation, where we don't get pulled or sucked in into a, a, a conversation in your office or even in families, right? Our conversation is so important. And we need to learn from Jesus how to stay sharp with our mouth. Because the Bible says, He made my mouth like a sharp sword. And the sharp sword, the word of God, is not to cut down and to attack people. It is to build. It is to encourage. Hallelujah. To be an encourager in your home. And everybody can do this. The axe is to break, to cut down big structures. Is there a big stumbling block in your life? Is there something that is like a big stump that is blocking you want to do something for God, but there is a blocking. You want some, some real restoration in your family situation, but there seems to be like no way, la, no change. La. These voices come and attack you and tell you that nothing is going to change. Life is always going to be like this. It's like a stumbling block. It needs a X to be cut down, to be chopped down. And that X cannot be blunt. It has to be sharp. If the devil has put thoughts and, 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 and discouraging thoughts in your mind this day, take that axe and chop it down. If there's some root of, of uh, unrighteousness, if there's some root of sin that is constantly dragging you, like you take one step back to God, it makes you take two, three steps back away. You need to cut it from the root. Otherwise, these kinds of root will seep into your home and seep into your family. And worse, it will seep into your heart. Use an axe and cut things from the root. Don't cut the branches like ding, 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 ding. Just, I just go to church and I, God give me some touch. Sometimes God says, you need more than a touch. You need to take the axe and cut the root of the problem. Cut it off. And use, and we use X to do this. Sam, so we got the metoc, the sickle, and the X. The metoc to break hard grounds. The sickle is for the harvest, is to cut off. Yeah, it's like 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 a branches, and the X. How do I get sharp? Are you with me this morning? Hallelujah! How do I get sharp? All of us we want to be sharp, right? How do I get sharp? Spend time with God. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Pray in the Holy Spirit. This morning we prayed. Before the church, we prayed. Why do we pray? Why, why um, when we talk about a mission, we pray and everything? Because this is the house of prayer. We are praying people. And the more we pray, the sharper you become. So you've got problems and situations. Get on your knees and pray. Yeah, pray. Pray all the time. Amen. You know, uh, I was just, um, um, uh, yesterday I was in uh, FGT, 
and, and, and I was just sharing that uh, sometimes uh, the pastors say, uh, you know, we, we have a ministry and uh, we, we also talk to pastors who are some uh, very senior pastors already, right? Like 70 plus and, uh, and, and maybe some close to 80. And sometimes when I call, they say that, how are you, pastor? They say, I oh, you know, uh, you know how old I am. Uh, now I got to still get up and preach and everything. Of course, they're not, not complaining when this is pastor to pastor talk. Lah. Uh, okay. So, so we say, you are a... So I say like, you know, like, you are a pastor. Get down on your knees and pray. And they say that getting down on the knees and pray can. But after that, to get up is the problem. <laughs> right? Getting down is no problem. Get up from the prayer is problem. You know, but pray. <laughs> Whatever it is, lah. I think if we have to crawl also, we crawl and pray. Yeah, pray. Yeah, one of the best ways to stay sharp is pray. And, and in Jude chapter 1 verse 20, it says this, But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Yeah, pray in tongues. Pray in heavenly language. Oh, I cannot understand what I'm praying. Just pray. There is a realm that you are breaking through. God understands the issues of your heart when you cry out and pray in the Holy Spirit. It is not meant for one and of us to understand each other. It is a heavenly language directed towards heaven that has the power to break hard grounds. Stay sharp by praying in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Now, how do I stay? How do I apply sharpness? How do I apply sharpness? Just staying sharp, but we need to apply it, right? We need to apply it. It's to spend time with one another. As a church, you've got small groups. You've got various uh, ministries. I, I don't know exactly what ministries you have, but I'm pretty sure that you've got various ministries in the church. Find one. Find one where you can apply the sharpness. No point, stay sharp, but not, not being... What, what, is a, what use is a good, sharp tool, but never used? It will eventually get rusty. Right? But when it is used, and with one another, as a body of Christ, there's the anointing, there's the oil that will keep you going. Hallelujah. Find a place where you can where you can apply your sharpness. Spend time with one another. Do ministry together and use the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Iron sharpens iron and one man sharpens another. Yeah, we can never say, you know, like, I believe in Jesus, but I've got an independent church inside of me. That means they don't go to church. <laughs> Which church you go to? My church. <laughs> Me? <laughs> Me, myself, and I, and the Lord, I don't find that in the Bible. The only person who tried to do that, Jonah, was not very successful. <laughs> right? He thought that he cut, could cut it alone. Samson was not successful because he also thought that he could cut it alone. Those people, if you read in the Bible, who always try to do things alone, you will see that it will not, it will not come to any uh, success. But those who work together, because they can sharpen one another. Hallelujah. Yes, sometimes we might have a bit of a disagreement. Yes, sometimes we might have a bit of a different direction. But as long as we stay sharp for the glory of God, God will maintain peace, love and hope. Yeah? So, when you do this, you will begin to receive your own revelation from God. God speaks. God will speak to you. Don't think that, you know, I'm a church, just a church member. God cannot speak to me. God can speak to each and every one of us. There is no hierarchy in the kingdom of God. We are all sons and daughters. There's no title. You pastor, you, you, you are an elder, you are a leader, you are a children. For, for in the eyes of God, all people, all churches are His kingdom people. Amen. Hallelujah. 
I just want to um, uh, share Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. I think it's so important that in staying sharp, we use the word of God. You know, today, the world is full of opinions, right? Google will give you opinions. Nowadays, got uh, AI is a wonderful tool, but also can be misused if we just rely on it for our own direction. Yeah, we are meant to use the Word of God. Yeah, the Word of God in every season. Yeah, uh, you know, you know the story of Second um, uh, Kings. Uh, Chapter 6, verse 1 to 7, the story of uh, Elisha, yeah, after he has come into um, uh, ministry. I'm just going to close uh, with this uh, story here. Now the sons of the prophets said to Elisha, See the place where we dwell under your charge is too small for us. Let us go to the Jordan and each of us get there a lock. And let us make a place for us to dwell there. And he answered, Go. Yeah, I like that. The, the Bible school students ask Elisha, hey, this place is too small. Let's enlarge. Let's build. Let's expand. And goes to the pastor or the elder Elisha and says, and he says, okay, go. How many of you like that? I want to do this. I want to do this in the ministry. Okay, go. <laughs> yep. Go. Then one of them said, be pleased to go with your servants. And he answered, okay, I will go. Wow, that one also I like. Verse 4, so he went with them and when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees, but as one was felling a log, his axe head fell into the water and he cried out, Alas, my master, it was borrowed. Yeah, this man is in big trouble now. Then the man of God said, Where did it fall? When he showed him the place, he cut off a stick and threw it in there and made the iron float. And he said, Take it up. So he reached out his hand. You see, his hand could not handle the axe because it was also a borrowed axe. He was not familiar with the axe. He was probably not, did not own it. Yeah, did not, did not have a good grip of it because it was borrowed. I think in our faith, in our Christian faith, we all cannot just rely on borrowed stuff, but you need to have your own axe. You need to have your own axe and you have got a good grip of it and a good use of it. Never live on the faith of another. Husband depending on the wife to pray or wife depending on husband to pray, right? Uh, or a children or whatever it is. We all must have our personal conviction and personal faith. We all need to hold our own axe. Yeah? And in this story here, I'm going to close in a moment. And in this story here, the axe fell, fell into the water. And what did Elisha do? He picked a stick and he threw it in the spot where it fell. One of the traditions uh, uh, will, will, uh, will show that, that that is also a picture of, of when Jesus died on the cross. He died on a wood, on a piece of wood. That was carved out as a cross. And, and, and the picture of Elisha throwing that to that point is also a picture of wherever your life has a sinking feeling, wherever area that you have stumbled and fall, when Christ meets you, He meets you at the spot where you fell. Hallelujah. He meets you at the spot where you fell. Yeah, the worship thing can come. Christ will meet you where things went bad. When the man of God threw to that exact spot, the ex begin to float. The ex hate begin to float. Not normal. Up here cannot understand. Not natural. It needs the power of God. Whatever that sunk in your life, 
whatever dreams that you feel that oh it fell off god get the cross in that place and it shall float again your dreams come alive again in jesus name this morning if you are discouraged because you don't see the power of god working in your life call out to him get the cross on that spot and things shall rise again dreams come alive hallelujah own it never lived on borrowed faith this church is your church this church is not a church that you attend to it's more than that this church you are the church you own it 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 changes everything when you own it you can get back your sharpness there are four things in closing go to the right source when things begin to sink the guy went straight to the man of god elisha go to the right source don't go to the wrong source if you got a marriage problem don't go and talk to someone who had third three uh, on their third marriage <laughs> don't do that that's not the right source go to the right source number 2 something happened in your life or in your family identify where it fell identify and then you deal at the right spot and the right spot is when the cross meets you when jesus meets you and touch your heart and the last one elisha is not going to come and pick up for you your cell leader is not going to come and pick up for you <laughs> your elders are not going to come and pick up for you you've got to reach out and grab it back yourself hallelujah can we stand this morning oh hallelujah thank you jesus oh god we're going to pick it up back pick it up back in jesus name come on everybody just begin to pray let's be just begin to pray pray in the spirit come on shukara na baba baka shikara na baba baka ra na baba baka ri anda baka ra na ba ori ara na baba 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 ka shira na baba baka ka ri anda la na baba ka ra na ba e ra na baba 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 ka ka ri anda ra na baba baba ka ri ara na baba ka shoro do bo ori chao to him cry out to god come on let's cry out to god every circumstances every situation i am sharp i am sharp i am sharp i am sharp to overcome i am sharp to cut out things that doesn't belong in my life i am sharp by the grace of god things that have sunk shall rise again in the name of jesus where the cross meets my situation where the cross meets my heart where the cross invades my family my home be filled with the holy spirit the cross of jesus christ touch my heart in jesus name come on church just begin to cry out to god break the barriers break the obstacles break it down break it down in the name of jesus i am sharp for the lord i am sharp for the lord in the name of jesus oh every family every marriages every business situations every financial difficulties financial challenges in the name of jesus let me be sharp with my financial management in the name of jesus my family my children let me be sharp oh where there is a breakthrough oh let there be a stumbling block be broken in the name of jesus shokoro korono bo korono bo That's right. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Break it down. Break it down, oh God. Oh, let this day be a day of revival in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, roko boko shida boko no no boko no no. We're going to continue to praise and worship God. In a moment we're going to continue to praise and worship God, but just before
this morning i just want to pray for each and every one of you and this morning we like i said right from the beginning you may be a grandfather you may be a student you may be a young housewife you may be a businessman wherever you are at i pray in jesus name that you will be sharp for the glory of god if there are marriage issues i pray that it will be resolved in godliness in jesus name i pray those who are having a financial difficulties you will have that sharpness to to have this ability to overcome these financial difficulties and some of you maybe you need to talk to some godly people that have the expertise and skills to help you manage your finance so that you can cut things that is pulling you down from the root you shall be the ax and cut those things that is uh, um, causing you to be in this situation and you need godly counsel godly people sometimes we are a bit afraid or ashamed but god he is for you and not against you just receive that this morning and those of you some of you maybe got some fa- a bit of a bit of a tense situation in a family and sometimes we speak our mouth too soon may god grant us patience to speak out of the oracles of god by relying on his wisdom slow to speak but always ready to listen stay sharp in Jesus name god may you grant grace to each and every one of the household of faith in Jesus name i pray everybody say amen hallelujah 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 let's sing it hallelujah one more time come on let's go by your name resonate with my heart. You know why? Because my passion is to keep knives. <laughs> I got all kinds of knives from all over the world. Right? In fact, my, my wife especially is so scared of me. When I see a knife, I will buy it. Right? So anybody needs a knife or want to consult me on knives, ask me. Double agent, single bevel, double bevel, Japanese knives, how to sharpen knives. You know? And I think the word sharpen is very important. Right? I can tell you an example. Uh, my daughter came back and uh, we want to cook something special, but something simple. Nasi ulam. Have you heard of it? We use a lot of herbs. So I pull all the herbs from my, from my garden and start cutting down garlo, down whatever down I have. Right? And it's not easy to cut. So I make a mistake. Gave them blood knives. It's my mistake. And they were struggling for half an hour. I said, what's wrong? Right? Then... The knives, the knives. So I gave them sharp knives. And then it takes 10 minutes. Just imagine. Amen. 
So it resonates with my heart very much. So for you, especially ladies, you can never forget this mistake because you knew nice all the time in the kitchen. Amen? Amen. Okay, uh, let us uh, receive this benediction. Let us receive the benediction. If you'd like to stand, you can stand. May the grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us to His own glory and excellence. Amen. Amen. Receive it and be the peace of God be with you. Amen. <laughs>